there is no intent here to discuss the specifics of any island or any uh, particular utility. I would say what we're trying to do here is put in place the principles by which good regulation takes place. Uh, certainly, I'm very uh, confident that we have an independent regulator in Barbados. Uh, we have a transparent process in which the public is uh, able to take place or uh, take part in terms of being interveners in our process for rate reviews. We had a rate review in uh, 2009, as you know, and the decision in 2010 for Barbados. Prior to that, our last rate review was 1983. Uh, so essentially what we're talking about here is a process to achieve uh, that confidence, the best rates that are for the consumer quality and service, uh, quality of supply service standards that are acceptable. And, you know, the discussion I think will be open and fairly wide ranging, and we're bringing expertise from the World Bank. We're speaking about our own Barbadian expertise and, and other uh, regional expertise. Wind Farm at St. Lucie, the permission was granted by Town Country Planning. I would say there are ongoing efforts to. Uh, to secure the, the lease of the land, and that's with the landowner. Um, and at the moment, those negotiations are ongoing. Um, if wind energy were to uh, take place at that site, and we're still hopeful and certainly uh, working towards that objective, it would be one small part in what is tr uh, our effort to diversify the energy mix from Barbados. There's no single silver bullet, as it were, in Barbados. In the Caribbean, I know there are some islands that have geothermal and other sources of energy which could make a meaningful contribution. We're a little bit more limited in Barbados, but we are exploring those areas, uh, including the biomass. Uh, that's been long talked about with government for the production of energy from the gas. Uh, and as you would be aware to the, the utility of our Islay Depot, uh, its initiative, its own initiative, introduced a renewable energy rider, and that was approved on a pilot basis for Barbadians to connect with small solar PV into the grid. Uh, that is under review. The pilot uh, was for two years. We've collected some information, very limited, but we are uh, in a process now of review with the Fair Trading Commission and the utility. Mr. Mark King was the managing director of the utility. One of the things that we are a little concerned about is, is the need for coordination with some of the renewable energy projects that are going on. Because I think every, almost every island in the OECS has signaled its intention to explore its renewable potential, either through um, geothermal or, or solar PV and wind. And almost every country is talking about the ability to export. So whereas I know Nevis, a big part of its business plan involves the export of energy, I think that's also part of the business plan of Dominica and part of the business plan of St. Lucia. So I think one of the things we have to do is look at the coordination of those investments in renew renewable energy. Also look at interconnection, which is a big issue right now, and ensuring that those countries who want to export are able to export energy via um, some sort of facility to export. So it certainly is something that we're looking at, but we, we also believe that we have sufficient renewable energy potential in St. Lucia through geothermal and wind, and to some extent solar PV to supply our own needs. But I'm sure for Nevis, some of the neighboring islands like Antigua, and St. Kitts would present them probably more immediate possibilities than an island that's full of soft See, when the subsidy on kerosene was put in, it was put in to, to assist the disadvantaged people, the vulnerable um, sector of our society. They are not the ones who use kerosene anymore. So the government did not see any purpose in continuing a subsidy on kerosene where that subsidy was not benefiting the people for whom the subsidy was intended. The people who were benefiting from the subsidy on kerosene um, were the people involved in manufacturing. And we didn't think it was proper for the government to be subsidizing, um, using a subsidy that was intended for poor people to, to um, subsidize another segment of the society. The government does provide support to the manufacturing sector in a lot of other ways, but I don't think a subsidy on kerosene is the most efficient use of a government subsidy for the manufacturing sector. So um, I think um, times have changed and maybe what Mr. King needs to do is to look at the use of kerosene a little bit more carefully and he will see the wisdom in the government removing that subsidy on kerosene.